Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I make games, play games, and everything in between. Today, I'm gonna make a game from scratch and publish it to the App Store. Here's my game idea on the post-it note. There's a character and he's moving to avoid the things. But then I'm gonna use this control system. It's another post-it note. I'm gonna use this control system that I just learned about because when I learn about something new, I just wanna make a game using that new feature. I don't think I would actually make a game like this if it wasn't for the fact that I didn't know how to do this a week ago. Whatever, man. I just want to make a whole game from start to finish. And I got an idea. So let's get to it. Where's my coffee? Before we begin, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell if you haven't already as I put out content around making games with Buildbox. There's a saying I like and it's, uh, I don't even know if it's a saying or I just say it to myself all the time, but in order to do something you've never done before, uh, you're gonna have to do something you've never done before. So I have never sat down and made a game from start to finish, like upload to the app store, submit, finish, which is usually a pain in the ass. And I've gotten it down to a science or so, so I think. Step one, create new 3D game. Oh man, my internet is like not working right now. I'm in Colombia. With BuildBox, you do need to be able to connect to the internet. What this means for me specifically is I'll need to be saving a lot. I mean, you should be saving anyways because Buildbox is like, you know, dodge this. And I can change the name later. The idea is to just get moving. From here, I generally just make a UI screen and this will be called game UI. And then from here, game over UI. That's good for now. Let's get some basic mechanics working. We are not gonna want texture. Go ahead, add a sphere, go into the assets, scrap, grab a diamond. I think that would be cool. Let's make the sphere the character. I'm gonna duplicate this cube a couple of times. Let's change this angle. Cool. I'm gonna make some scenes. Lately, I've been trying to make everything in a single world because in the free version of BuildBox, you only get one world. And personally, I think you can do a lot with one world. The first thing I wanna do is Add a background. This is gonna be, we'll call this BK cube. Grab it here, put it in, make it small. And the size of the start. I wanna move that to zero. Move this to negative five, sure, why not? Keep it centered. And so this should be Z.2.5. That's background one. And let's move this over to zero and put the end to something like negative 10. We can always change it later. I think it's best to start with something and move forward. As this is the background cube, I'm going going to set the color animation and timer. I think I want to have maybe three different color animations. I'll set the duration to two as I found that two kind of work good for me. And this is where playing and experimenting is super important because you can see what works for you. And then when you are faced with the decision again, you know where you're comfortable with. So we got to just connect these, pick pastel type of colors. And again, none of this is set in stone. This can be changed down the line. And look at the camera view. See how it looks. Cool. I need to change some things. Move this to kinematic. Or oh, static is actually probably the best. This will be a background, so it's not gonna be doing anything special. I want the character to be a sphere. Let's move them in the middle. We do not need that cube right away. Delete that cube. This will be the character. Change it to player. And we're gonna want it to be kinematic. Between you and me, I think dynamic characters are really cool, but we're just going for a kinematic character here. Then this player will have move controls and we're gonna set Y to zero because we don't want the player to be able to control the movement on the Y axis, whether forward or up, just none. Sensitivity to one, I feel like is a good one. Oops, so we're moving this back and forth. Good. I like to add a position limiter. I think it's always good on start. Also, save. It's been too long since I saved and we don't know about my Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> it's 
PhD. Look at that. Position the material. Okay, X2 and then 2 and then... What this means is you cannot go more to the right. You can only go negative X2 to the left and X2 to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and change those numbers to 4. And when you don't want anything to change on the Z or the Y, go in here and just hit delete. That's what you want. And then you won't be missing... Oh. See, now it's not working. Oh, it's four, okay. Okay, perfect, that looks good. I guess I can make this background cube the length of four, might as well as, I think that would look better for the gameplay, cool. And then the next thing we want is for the character to be moving. Oh, wait a minute, I totally just remembered the whole purpose of this game was to create a unique movement type using the control buttons in the UI. Let's get the game UI connected. And then from here, let's grab some control buttons like that and like that and here I'm just trying to make sure everything looks good and it's set up properly and let's also add a score this game will have score our points best current I like to make these adjustments as I put them in because I find I forget about them later and then when things are not working I don't know <laughs> I don't know why and let's go in here change this and make this more white and then my favorite uh, font is... Do you know the difference between font and typeface? I do. Looks good, looks good, looks good. So these are the control buttons. It says left button. And then this will be right button. Okay, save. There we go into the player. I'm gonna disconnect this touch move node. When disconnecting node, some node, whether or not they're connected, will still affect the game. So it's very important to pay attention and play test. So right now it looks like nothing is happening, which is good. Let's go grab the UI button under controls. And I'm gonna duplicate this so that there's a left and a right button. But we can change this one to left button and then select here left button and then this one right button again select here right button what we need now is movement and if we have a movement node here the movement will be to move to the left which is negative x so let's do a negative two and move right and here this will just be positive two let's see how this works looks good position limiter is good okay so it does move kind of slow which is not what I was going for so let's up that number to five we also want the object to go back to the middle when you release the button so here here I'm not sure if I need Delta selected or not so let's find out okay so I do think I need Delta selected and then it'll just force it to move back to X0 like that I'm gonna take it to be 0.25 seconds so that it does it faster. Basically you release and it goes back. Now this is a strange type of game mechanic when you're playing around, just you know, have fun with it. I can always change it down the line. Saving now. Okay, so we got left, right. Interesting game mechanic in terms of how you press left and press right. So next we need enemies. This is an enemy cube. Make this an enemy right there. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. So these are all gonna be bad guys. So here, enemy cube. I wanna move this at a 45 degree angle. No, that's actually not bad. Let's make it all 45. I mean, this is the enemy cube. Not gonna lie, I did have something in mind originally, 45 here. And I think we need to scale it down. Cool. It's gonna make it long. Five, make it super long. Okay. Now I really like the color animation, so I'm gonna be playing with this. This is an enemy, so we're gonna want it to be black. Color duration two, two. And you're going kind of from black to dark gray, and then have that loop, and let's save it again. <laughs> Did you see it fell? This is a kinematic enemy. I, I kind of want to add a wave node to it just because I, I like the wave nodes, man. I think they're really cool, useful, and they just add a cool depth to the game. Let's go ahead and make it move Y, but just having a wave node is okay. But you know, when everything is moving at the same speed, then it makes things predictable and that's not cool. So we're gonna go ahead and just change one of these to two speed and then the one speed and then 
And you know what I also just realized? Our character doesn't move. So let's go to the character. I'm gonna save it again. Always gotta save. The character needs to be moving up, which is in the Z direction. Let's check it out. We want a movement node. We want the object to always be moving. I'm gonna hit negative five just to see how that looks. Yeah, okay, cool. Next camera control. I prefer the gamepad, but I think there's a lot of potential in having the camera follow the character. It's good to just play around with both. See how, I, I kind of like that. You can see in the gamepad, you do not see that. Once the background color changes, wow, okay, so we do this. So now all these color animations are here. I'm gonna make it like a step so we can get a better idea of how it works. Save as always. And it's supposed to be that if you hit that character, you die. Make sure this is set up to enemy. Oh, you know what? We don't have a player if collide with enemy, anything happens. Go if collide. This is also a good time to add event observers. This game will not have a level complete. It's gonna be an infinite forever game. So just call this one game over if collide with enemy let's connect this always connect if collides to created node right there i have made so many mistakes on that go here game over node now whenever you have a game over node add an event observer here and this event observer is called game over then we go here oh you know what we want to delay as well we don't want it to go game over right away we want maybe like 0.5 seconds to happen and then go game over we're gonna want debris explosion as well because that's like really cool and easy to do. Let's go to the asset library, grab another sphere. This will be called the debris. We're gonna go and add set random color. This is one of my most favorite things to do. And then I'm also going to do scale animation. I want everything to shrink be no delta and then maybe make this 0.5 what this means is the moment this item comes into the world it has a random color and then it shrinks down we're going to add a delay 0.25 and then remove it'll appear get smaller and then be removed now let's go to the player and then add the debris explosion go here select debris dynamic save also save here and then I don't remember if I need the defeat or the remove. I'm gonna put both of them here and then just kind of see what happens in the actual game. So now we need to wait for the enemy. There's the enemy. Let's get to it. Hit the enemy and game over. Okay, so we don't know that there's a game over, but there's a game over. So let's do that again. So I run into this black item. Oops. And so we saw everything happen, but it happened super fast. First, debris animation. Let's move this to one and move that to 0.5. So that has more time. Let's also go here and let's try remove. Yeah, let's try remove. And then the next, we need to go to the UI because there's nothing here and we don't, I don't know what's going on. Navigation button. This will let us start from the beginning, restart this here so we can see what our score is current world and i wonder if the game ui has that as well so, uh, this is score we want to change that to current world save game over Put that down always good to try to label everything properly because you will make mistakes that's just how it goes labeling things and organizing things just totally help down the line can you i have a black box that i use it's, a, it's more of a gray box actually and i'm gonna go to the open event because this is more for the open event and let's make let's put this all the way in the back Go like this. I'm gonna hit this record button. When messing with the frames and the animation here, you wanna know what you're doing. You wanna save. A lot of things can go wrong here. So just be very specific in what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing here, I wouldn't mess with it. So I'm gonna hit record and then the opacity is set to zero. So here we can see it's been set and then I go to 20 and then I set the opacity to 0.65. The tab, and we can see it, it changed there. I can see it and then I unclick. And now I don't mess with that anymore because it can be dangerous. Save it. I'm gonna hit play because we've made a lot of changes and I don't remember exactly what we changed. Uh, it looks like I'm already game over without even... Let's try it again. 
Okay, so instant game over is not what we want. I made some mistakes. That image that we had fade to black, I'm gonna command X, take it out, and then put it in command B. So this is the actual game over UI, and then this is the game UI. I mistook those command X, and go to game over UI and command B. Now here, I'm just gonna move things around. Cool, and we look good. Command F to save, and let's get back to it. So hit this. Boom. All right, no game over. I might have disconnected some stuff. Nope, if collide with enemy, game UI, game over. Oh, things might have gotten disconnected here. Nope, they look to be connected. So I'm gonna, I think it could be the remove character. Yeah, see, it was the remove character. I just wanted the character to not be there. So let me try the defeated character. Perfect. This is huge because I always get confused on which one to use, the defeat or remove, and we want the defeat. Oh, and you can even remove it with the defeat. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, cool. It looks like selecting the remove, not what we want. Gameplay looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this and just kinda Command C, move it around. And here we're just moving some enemies around to kind of have the game have multiple options so you got to be paying attention now there are ways to have the object appear randomly in certain areas we will not be doing that today all right let's try connecting it like this all right so we are back to moving cool now i kind of want to move a little bit faster Cool, yeah, so this is much faster. And then also, let's give the character a color. I like yellow, I think it's pretty good for characters. I'm gonna change the position limiter to 3.5. See how that looks. Cool, and then we're gonna want trail. Play with that, save. Now for the trail, I usually go to the deep fly asset, grab that. Here's the trail. There's also a defeated animations. We might as well grab that as well. Deep fly, defeated animation after defeat. And let's see how that looks. Cool. Check it out again. Move it up. Make it a little bit smaller. 0 0.75. 0 .5. The diamond will be the point. Okay, so let's go into the diamond. Add a point. Looks good. Defeat if collide with the player. Gets removed. Does all these things. Now, I also want to add a wave to the diamond so that it's moving left and right. I'm going to add a random five. The diamond can be moving. I'm going to have one of them be zero. Diamond is not moving at all. This could be two. This could be Y2. Be Z2 and then one more C0. Connect all these points and this will just try to give it a randomization in how the diamond moves. Let's see how it looks because it may not be great. Save it as usual. So here we can see it's moving around. We don't want it to move in the Y direction. Go in here and get rid of all of these Ys. So here we got zero, zero, we got two, we got negative two, positive two, and then we can just put negative two here and then negative two on the Z and let's take a look. Cool. That looks great. It looks like the game over needs to be a little bit higher. Save it again. And now I just want to add this to all everywhere. My biggest concern will be if the diamond goes through the enemy, but okay, save it and save this test. The character is not getting the diamond, or did you notice that? And I think that's because the diamond is just too high up in the air. Yeah, so the diamond's never gonna touch. And we want diamond to be on our Y of one. Okay, let's do that. Delete this one, diamond one, and let's give it a go. Cool. Next thing I wanna do, because this is an endless game, is add some difficulty to it. So we go to the player, and then we want the movement, select move, and then here we go, increase by point, and we're gonna have it increase by 10% a point, which is kind of a lot, 
but this game is not supposed to be an easy game. They're gonna reorganize the levels a little bit better now, just because I think it'll be helpful. Let me move this to minus three, y 1.5, I think it's fine, and z three. And then this will be two. This would be one, zero. What this is doing is just kind of making it more consistent throughout the game in terms of how the enemy is set up. And I'll probably still keep the other scenes, but I want to have a good progression like this. And it's all random anyways. And dead. Cool. That is the game. Okay, so one, two, three. Let's, I'm just gonna label these. I like to label correctly. But let's go here. Now I want to add a name to the game just so you know. When the game loads, you know that this is Dodge. This 3D. I think it's a good name. Something like this. See how that looks. I usually like it when the game just jumps into the world. Let's see what we can do. I wonder if I can go here and then do is touched and then maybe this will cause everything to start moving maybe so nothing happens here's the game in the second you touch no oh i'm gonna give it a touch move because maybe it's messing it up Ooh. what if we do this then this can be always set to its move i'm gonna save it because i'm not sure what will happen okay perfect next we want some kind of instructions like I think I have a finger image icon that I can use here. Yeah, I don't like that one. Situations like this, there's a flat icon website that I like to go to, finger. There's a finger with a thumb, that would be even better. But maybe not. Cool. I wonder if I can flip this image. Nope. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, put it into Photoshop, flip it, flip horizontal. Perfect. Oh, that was kind of cool. Did you see that? Now we have the game. I'm going to save this. Dodge this 3D. So here we just put in bundle ID. I haven't created the bundle ID yet, but I'm going to do that right now. Version 0.001. Distance is points collected. Now we're going to save. We have everything we need to upload it to the App Store almost. The next thing I need to do is go to my developer account for Apple. Sign in. Hopefully the internet is working. We have a green light. Go into your developer account, hit certificate identifiers and properties. Go to identifiers, select new. I just hit continue. Description, what was it? Dodge this 3D is what you name the bundle. If you're not sure how to name your bundle, just Google it. It's pretty straightforward. I right, hit continue. Now this will take a little bit of time to register. Again, you want to go to developer.apple.com. Now that it's being set to register, I'm going to go to appstorecollect.apple.com. I'm also going to go here and review everything. Here is where I also try to make a screenshot of the game. To do that, I'm just going to zoom in a lot. It's not letting me zoom in. I'm just going to make this super big and Okay, let's take it off our debug mode and where this doesn't look great so what i'm going to do is actually just move the camera so that i can get a better angle and be sure to pay attention to here oh you know what i can just maybe move this and then we are zoomed in a lot i'm gonna go even more okay maybe that's too much it looks like and then i do control shift command s5 and then something like this and then yep Command S5 is key and then I'll just hit this button and I'm gonna add some fog as well. Just use whatever is the default and then try to, you know, I'm just gonna play the game. And I'm taking screenshots right now. So hopefully one of those is decent. Let's take a look at all these screenshots that I took. I'm not gonna lie, they're not great. I'm not really happy with what I saw. So I'm gonna see if I can do something like this. And five, I think this could be a little bit better. Okay, cool. I think this is actually pretty good. I like this. And we're just gonna go ahead and take that, use that. I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop. I'm gonna actually clip it from here, that. And then we're gonna need a 1024 by 1024 image. First, let's save this, export PNG. This I think will be good for the image icon. I'm just trying to make this game as fast as possible while showing you what I do when making a game. Cool, and then we go here, canvas size, pixels. Now you're gonna need a 1024 by 1024 for the app store. That's what this is for. 
And then from here, we export. Make sure transparency is not checked. And let's go to the game. Dropbox 3, dodge this. 1024 by 1024 dodge at this time the game should have been processed through apple we can just go here select the new app ios dodge this 3d english bundle id so up oh, there it is and for access everything looks good create from here we can actually just go ahead and export to ios whenever making a game i think it's super important to put the game on a phone as fast as possible what you play in the simulator may not exactly be the same on your phone this just reminded me that smart penguin has a frames per second asset that is super helpful i kind of wish i would have put it in here by now but i'm moving so fast i didn't even think about that so here is the game and these are screenshots what i do for screenshots is really just take pictures on my phone and then use those and i'll show you a shortcut for all of that in a second. Here's a 1024, we put that there. Image is wrong format, but, oh, you know what, let me do this, dot png. See if that helps, sometimes that works. Sweet, it's totally gonna work, I think. Next we have the game here. Oh snap, the game is zoomed in way too much. So let me go ahead and cancel everything I was doing. Basically, I need to save it again, but with the camera set to one for the X, Y, and Z. So let's go ahead and export iOS, dodge this too, save, always save here because if you forget, that is one way to learn. Alright, next let's go back. Whenever uploading to the App Store, I always use this lines of code to turn off the music on the game if you're listening to music. I personally hate it whenever I'm listening to music and I load a game, the game stops the music. So that's the code I use to make sure that doesn't happen. The game name, dodge this. 3D, go here, and then from here, I go to Delegate App, grab these lines of code, that here, select this to Generic Device, Archive, and now it's working to upload it. You know what I also noticed that we forgot? We forgot to put the icon image here, which totally bugs me. There. Uh, save it. Oh, we have internet issues, so this could be bad. That looks good. Let's try to distribute it. Billbox doesn't like my lack of internet connection. While I'm not able to save right now, I might be able to still upload. So we're gonna see what happens. Okay, this doesn't seem to be working, so I'm gonna hit cancel. And what I'm gonna do is disconnect from the internet. Again, I'm in Colombia and something's up with my internet. Obviously, good internet connection is super important to me. For now, I don't wanna lose my project. Cool, that's good. Distribute, so this needs to upload. So the next thing I do is I play the game on my phone and then I just take screenshots and I use those screenshots for the app store. You do need to adjust accordingly for iPad and older iPhone models. That just takes time and I've gotten pretty good at it in Illustrator and Photoshop. I don't remember which one exactly. A good thing to do while waiting for things to finish along. So from here, I'm just gonna go in and edit whatever information I can. Just adding some information about the game. It doesn't look like I need a lot. Edit ranking, so here's, my games usually just select none on everything. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know what it says, but I've read it before, save. Pricing, this is gonna be free to download for you. App information, I think the main thing is this privacy policy. I have a privacy policy already set in place. Game, this is a game, casual, this is all good information. We submitted the games, which means it should be showing up on the test flight right now. Here it is. I'm gonna add all App Store Connect people that I have on my phone and my account. And these are just people, friends, no encryption happening, which also reminds me when you're exporting in BuildBox, you wanna make sure you select this use encryption. I forgot to do this. I don't know why it's not automatically checked, but now I checked it, I saved it. It's very easy to take this game and get the code to recreate it. I made this game in a day, so it's not that big of a deal, but in a game that you spend a lot of time on, you wanna make sure you check that box. So now we have test flight. I'm gonna open up my phone. When submitting to the app store, there's two sizes that are very important. 
But when I take pictures on my phone, this is the size that it will take. For the iPad, I will need this size. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create that in, what, Illustrator? Yeah, I'll use Illustrator. And I guess I could use Photoshop as well. Uh, new 2048. I'm at four. I usually try to take four screenshots of everything. Let's see how the upload is going. Let's go here, make sure everything gets uploaded. Over here, hit new, and this will be... You'll see what I'm doing here later. I'm just setting things up so that I can upload quickly, submit to the app store, and eat lunch. I have not eaten lunch. That is my motivation. When it comes to these screenshots, I also have a very similar setup for Android. Done. So it's gonna take about five minutes for it to be updated on the app store. But in the meantime, might as well just play with the game. I didn't even notice, but the point system is working properly, so that's good. Ah, uh, game over. So here we go. Let's go provide. There's no encryption. Let's go to test flight. Should be ready immediately. Got the icon. Okay, it looks like it's going. So let's open it and screenshot. And then here we just, I just record. You see I'm tapping on the, so here's the game and then we just tap and then take screenshots along the way. Maybe if that would stop happening, that would be nice. The game goes faster. Now we got a couple of screenshots and let's upload them onto the app store and submit this game. So step one is go to my photos and so I got one, two, three. I got about six photos. I'm only gonna use four of them. And the first thing I wanna do is move the photos into my game folder. I usually make a separate folder for this, so I'm gonna do that right now. Grab these, put that in there, and then move these in here. Let's see what we got. This looks good. We got one, two, three, four. Now check this out. So here we just go to App Store, prepare for submission, and grab those four photos. Truth be told, I don't really care where I live in the world, but I do want good internet. That is a truth. So I hit refresh. You can also just start moving these photos over here. So I usually scale them accordingly. The more you do this, the better you get at it. I think that's the biggest thing that I learned was it used to take me hours to do this and now I can pretty much get it all done in an hour. That's very cool, I think. While I'm waiting for my internet to come back, I'm able to make these adjustments. And now we have the internet, so we just grab these four and it will process. And then we have these, so we might as well save it. We quick export screenshots. This is where having good naming convention becomes super helpful. So now these are all saved. We go here, we can see that the images are here. And we can select the next phone display and that's what the new images are for. So we grab these four and we just move them over here. This is for the iPads. Scaling will be different. And let's have this export screenshots. Uno, dos, tres, Quattro. We go here, and next we select the iPad. Let's go get the screenshots. These are the big ones. Now, this is different in that you have to do it twice. I'm not exactly sure why, I just know how to do it. After these get uploaded to the iPad Pro third generation, we wanna do the exact same thing to the iPad Pro second generation. And then boom, from here, I like, whoop, whoop. Well, from here, I like to just move things, like have the dodge this be the first one. I don't really care about the others. And then we hit save. Everything looks good. Let me play the game a little bit just to make sure it works the way I want. And here we go. We're just playing. Game looks good. And I'm happy. So from here, we select the build. 2.0. Done. Save. And here, I'm just going to submit it. One or more errors. Oh, dodge objects, dodge this, 3D, save, submit for review. Oh, here we go, I gotta put my name and information. So when you forget something, Apple will let you know, which is super helpful. Finally is, does your game contain ads? I don't have ads in this game. <laughs> it would actually take me 30 minutes maybe to do everything with the ad mob, but I'm really hungry right now. I've not eaten, so I'm just gonna hit no. No ads in this game, and then submit. Maybe I'll go back and put ads later. Right now the app has been submitted to the App Store. It'll take a couple days to go through the approval process. The 
shouldn't be anything to stop it. Hopefully by the time this video is out, so is the game. And I might even take time to put it onto the Android as well, just to be well-rounded. And the, everything I did on the App Store is the same or similar process I do on the Play Stores. And that is me making a game from start to finish and submitting it to the app store. So I hope you enjoyed that process. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope to do this more. And I think the biggest thing when making a game is putting it to the app store. A lot of people like to talk about the things they're gonna do. I prefer to show you what I've done. So check out the game and I hope this video was helpful. If so, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts things you would like to see. And until next time, stay safe. I'll see you later. Peace.